According to your handout, there are three steps we need to follow in order to convert from the time domain to the, frequent, the phasor domain. So, for the first step, we write the expression in terms of cosines. We don't want any sines in our expression. This is because the phasor domain uses a cosine reference. Now the expression we already have is already in written as a cosine. So this is already done. For the second step, we're going to use Euler's identity to write the cosine in terms of exponentials. So for this, we can write, we get the real part of a e to the j theta d times e to the j omega t. And we can write that as the real part of a phasor times e to the j omega t. So I've just written this, uh, this is our phasor now. So then as the last step, we want to factor out the e to the j omega t. So remember how I said phasors were going to not have to deal with time or frequency. So you can see that here, we're taking out this term, omega is 2 pi f, so we won't have to deal with f and t in our expressions. So then we're left with a vector phasor is only a function of d, not time anymore, is e to the j, a times e to the j, beta d. The phasor, a d, this, has a tilde over it, that's that little squiggle over it, over the a to indicate that it is a phasor. So when you see this tilde over the, uh, a letter, that means it's a phasor. So to summarize, in the time domain, we have an expression as a function of time and space, a cosine omega t plus beta d, and we could convert that to the phasor domain, we get v uh, as a, only a function, v vector phasor, only a function of d is a e to the j beta d. The phasor is a vector because it has both an amplitude and a direction. The amplitude is a, and the, the direction, the orientation of it, is given by the angle theta with the real axis. For example, we can plot this phasor vector of amplitude in a, amplitude a, and phase, the phase here is beta d, because we have e to the j beta d, on a complex uh, plane as shown here. Let's come up with something more specific than just calling the amplitude a value of a. For our wave traveling from the generator to the load, we will replace a with v naught plus. v naught plus is a coefficient. The zero subscript here is used to distinguish it between the v1 and v2 and so forth waves that we had when we were studying pulses and individual reflections. He will, here we will use the zero to indicate that we are in the steady state. And the plus means that it's, as before, it's propagating towards the load. So notice it's plus here, it's not in the positive z direction anymore. We're going to be consistent though and say that plus always means it's going towards the load whether we're using the z or the d coordinate system. Here is the matched transmission line including the voltage phasor traveling from the generator towards the load. The voltage anywhere along this line is given by this voltage phasor. For the matched load scenario we just looked at, let's draw the total voltage phasor at specific points along the transmission line. Specifically, we're going to draw it at these three positions, d equals zero at the load, and then lambda over four away from the load, and lambda over two away from the load. So first, just draw the voltage phasor at d equals zero.